In fairness, in, in, in the camp, like, there is a good vibe, and even around the county as well. Like, a lot of lads are buying into playing with the county and stuff and football. Like, and I think you can kind of see it. If you look, I, I was only reading this week to say that the under-20s and the, the minors and the panels and stuff, like, the spread of players from all over the counties is a lot more compared to when I was even back playing and minor and under-20, like. So I think there is more of a buy-in, and that's what we want. Like, we want lads coming through, developing, and... And we're coming up to the senior grade and, and hopefully being successful with the seniors as well. Like. We've lost a number of players since 2020. There's a lot of young fellas after coming in as well. Some of the games we were very unlucky in. Uh, there, was, there, was, there was elements of the game where we were very, very good. But unfortunately, 10, 15 minutes of bad spells have cost us in probably three or four of the games. Um, so look, we have to kind of move forward now from the league. Um, I think Tipperary football have spent... Over, I think it was 20, someone said this to me there, uh, the last 22 years, 17 years down in, down in uh, the fourth division. So look, it's, it's, that's where Tipperary football is, is kind of at. Um, but, but at the same time, we're, we are confident in terms of we have five or six players to come back. Um, come Sunday against Warford, we want to get a result um, just to get the confidence going again. But we are looking ahead probably to the, towards the, we'll say the Tottenham Cup, um, because it's given us kind of hope that if we do get all our players back, we feel that we can have, we can have a good rattle at it. My professional life is dealing with disadvantaged kids, so I'm a teacher, but I teach kids who have left school early for for a variety of reasons. So I'd be very conscious of, of you know, the disadvantaged, and maybe that that was the. The, dis the attraction for me with Waterford and that they haven't, they haven't been doing very well over the long number of years. But I mean, there, there's no quick fix for Waterford football. You know, it's, it's a case of trying to, trying to bedrock, build roots, you know, have a foundation there so that when the next person comes in, there is a little bit of a foundation there. And if you can get guys to commit for maybe four or five years and, and, and develop younger players uh, during that time, then, then you know, you, baby steps. But I do, I do think personally that there's fabulous talent in Waterford. It's just getting guys to commit to it is the, is the, is the key to it. I suppose both camps probably are on the back of a tough, a tough league campaign. So both are coming. We're we're into knockout football now, so nothing to lose. Um, so both we be after a win, and we both kind of see each other as an opportunity to kind of get the, the show on the road. So. We definitely won't be underestimating water or anything like that. We know the challenge they're going to pose and stuff like that. So we kind of we we became under pressure last year when we went down there first. And um, so look, we know what's ahead of us. We know we've a job to do, and hopefully we can get over the line. When you're looking over the leagues, we've kind of looked. We've probably given away a few sloppy goals just from probably laps concentration and stuff in games and, and like stuff for that. Uh, I think if we can cut out or at least minimise a lot of those mistakes, it can go a long way to to winning a game. I suppose we've probably left a lot of chances behind us too in front of goal and attacking like so there's definitely room for improvement there. And I think just overall like our, our general game plan now we're we're reasonably happy with, you know, we're we've worked on it now for, for a good number of weeks and like I think the, the confidence is building within the group and, and the players as well. Like so yeah, look we're Look, we're, we're confident up that we're, we're in a good place going up to the Simba Stadium on, on a Sunday. It's no secret to know the amount of players we've lost since 2020, but look, they've, they've all kind of stepped away for their own reasons, whether it be travel, retirements, or just unable to commit through work and stuff like that, which, look, you understand. We've a couple of good young fellas brought in since then and stuff like that. The only difficulty that has been is that we haven't been able to get everyone on the pitch together. It's very hard when you throw in 10 or 12 new young fellas into a game and expect them to kind of do do the job. You're kind of throwing them in at the deep end. So, look, once we can kind of get everyone back in the field, there's definitely a good few young fellas there now that are well capable of stepping up to the plate, yeah. For both teams, for tipping ourselves, this again, the prize is to, to play Kerry. Play the all the Munster reigning, Munster reigning All-Ireland champions. Like, that's, that is the prize. Like, there's there's no fear there in it. Like, you'd, we'd love to bring Kerry to, to Fairfield in, in three or four weeks' time. Uh, if we were after beating Tip, like that'd be that'd be unreal. Like the, the, I can only imagine the crowd that you'd bring from from around the county, around Munster to, to that game. So, like we'd we'd love we'd love for something like that to happen. Yeah, we're on the back of a tough league campaign. So what you do there is you, you close the book on it and kind of you put the shoulder to the wheel again and get ready for a new campaign, which is the Munster Championship starting Sunday. Everyone in fairness has has dug in, put in a shift. So we're hoping, yeah, that if we if we could hopefully get a win at the weekend, that that will kind of give us and give, especially we spoke about the new players, give them that bit of confidence and bit of belief and look to 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 lift spirits, no doubt, and hopefully that will drive it forward again.
after the rest of Mead game, the following session, like we've got two options here: is down tools and just and just uh, and just kind of sail through the rest of the season, or one we we keep working hard and to be fair to the players, and that's the one thing I will say: they've been working so hard, and the train it's just they're just not showing it in the matches at the minute, and hopefully that will turn, and we have to believe it's going to turn that we can still have a big big season ahead that you know we can be we can be competitive like there's games that we left behind us in the league but there's nothing to say that come if we play some of those oppositions later in the Tottenham Cup that we can reverse those results and that's and that's that's the one thing that we have to believe in assuming we don't get to a Munster final we'll probably be in the Talton Cup um, but it, there's a buzz about championship you know there's a different level even in training last week there was that different there was that narkiness there that you like to see you know there was a few niggles and stuff like that so that's what you like to see the intensity goes up and I suppose the challenge the challenge for every player like, like you can have all the skill in the world but if you can't function at the level that's needed for championship then you know, you're going to be found out. So I think the difference between the league and the championship is that level of, of intensity and that level of mental toughness and preparedness that you're, you're ready. The most important thing for us is that we can give a count of ourselves on Sunday and play the game rather than, than the occasion. I think if we do that, then we'll be very competitive.